house itself dates back to about 1906. And you can tell from the quality of the soil that it's, uh, it's been well cultivated for over 100 years. But in its current incarnation, we've been here 35 years, because there wasn't much here when we came, was there? We've gradually replaced things, and reshaped the garden, <coughs> reshaped the vegetation. My idea is mainly to use it for flowers and plants. Tony would have liked to have some um, vegetables, yeah. but really there isn't enough space to do vegetables and flowers, so we've got the flowers. I sneaked in a few vegetables, but the lawn is still a lawn and not a potato. We keep the hens at the end of the garden and let them scratch around in the autumn. We plan the, uh, the overall shape of it. So, for example, for one side of the garden we put an, an, an arc, uh, which, behind which is the shrubbery, uh, just to frame the garden, really. It did evolve, but there was a basic structure to start. Yes, I agree. The style of the garden, um, no. I look at it now and again, I think. This time of year, there's nothing much happening in that corner. Perhaps we could get something to enliven that particular corner at that time of year. I suppose the focus of the garden is here on the patio because this is where we sit and have dinner maybe if it's a nice evening. And we like to just look out on the garden. Some lovely azaleas and rhododendrons come out this time of year, which we inherited when we moved here. Um, and that's very much something we've been very proud of over the years. And we planted the wisteria behind us. And we also put in place a uh, the raised bed in front of us, um, where we reserve this for um, annuals because it's a, a southwest facing bed. This year we've got busy lizards in there, uh, which give a nice spectacular display, um, and they're pretty maintenance free. But we, we like a, a blaze of colour in these beds, don't we? And a touch of the exotic as well. We've got a palm tree, and it's looking extremely healthy at the moment. A bed of um, a bed of heuchera, which are a bit odd coloured, they're sort of orangey leaves, but they'll grow in shade and they provide a really interesting contrast with the, the greenery. And I do like the lilacs that we've planted, they're so much more vivid and so much more contrasting. And they're still not fully grown yet. Plenty of trees around the garden, um, we've got a mountain ash which we planted, it's, it's coming on very well. The Japanese maples, which are now just starting to, to take off. My advice would be to not just roam around the garden centre picking the things that look nice to you and then come home and think, where will they go? I think it's better to have some idea of what time of the year you want different places to be flowery or what size of things you need. Plan what you, what kind of things you're looking for in your garden. But yeah, you're right, it's, it's having a good idea of what you're looking for. Not just the colours, but also the structure of the garden, the yeah. height uh, of things. And... Don't be so busy doing things to your garden that you don't enjoy it. You know, you need to be able to sit back, relax, look out and think, great, this is lovely, without thinking all the time, oh, I should be doing this, I should be doing that. Sit and relax in your garden. I can care about that because it's part of your home, isn't it? You don't want to spend all the time decorating, so same with the garden. And yeah, work on it, but enjoy it as well.